The reason why I paint is because I have to. Because I have something to express that cannot be expressed any other way. It is, the work I do is just as much a part of me as my fingers are a part of me, or my hands, or my hair. And I do get into times in the studio where I'm in the studio so much and for so many hours that I go out and I'm trying to talk and socialize with people and I don't even know what to say. I don't even know how to say it. I'm tripping over my words. I'm having difficulty communicating my ideas. I grew up in East Taos and I grew up right on Lake Huron. I hated growing up there. I really did. My cousins all lived down in Detroit. I used to beg my parents to move down to the city anywhere with sidewalks. You know, you hear about all these things that people do and all these experiences that they have in the city. In a small town, those things just don't happen. It's something that you read about in a book or you see in a movie. You know, I've been living here in Detroit since 2008 and even now, sometimes I think about, as a child, what I would, what I dreamt of, and I'm living it now. I started a series of 500 paintings in November of 2017, and I'm about two thirds of the way through the project right now. Uh, this is the first major art series slash artwork I have done that is totally my own that's not, you know, something that I'm doing design-wise for a product or for another company. And it's not, you know, a, a, a set design for a play. So when I started off this series, I did some preliminary paintings that are not included just to kind of get a feel for what I was gonna do and how I was gonna do it. You know, what size was I gonna work in? What medium was I going to work in? And on what surface was I going to work on? Am I going to work on canvas? Am I going to work on paper? Are these going to be drawings? Are they going to be paintings? What am I going to do? And at first, I was coming up with lots of different subjects. So then I decided that I was just going to do portraits and just leave it at that. And I decided to do them in uh, groups of seven. So that way they have a similar color palette and a similar composition. And the reason for that is just to experiment and learn more about how color works together and how altering simply the amount or saturation of a color from one piece to the next dynamically changes how it's perceived and what kind of visual language it's using. If you take a painting that has the same colors, let's say one has like a grayish mauve, and then one has like a really hot fluorescent yellow. And if you give one painting more of that grayish tone than the other painting, it's gonna read completely differently. The emotion that comes through in that painting will be radically altered. So. This series was a, a great exercise in understanding better how that comes together. But interestingly enough, the paintings often turn into people from my life. And it, the most interesting thing is it's not people who are very close to me or ever been that close to me or ever been, had a, what I thought was a large role in my life. It, it sort of made me think about my life in a bigger way and the people who have come into my life in, in a bigger way and this idea of community. Art is a two-way street. I don't think that it is just about the artist and their ego. I think it also is a participatory process where the viewer is just as much a part of how this ecosystem works than just whatever the artist wants to say. And if an artist is trying to say something and it is lost upon the viewer, then the artist needs to go back and figure out how they're gonna communicate this better. We're not machines, right, who create this art. 
And the difference between a painting and uh, a digital drawing of something that has not been created by a human, that's a computer digital drawing, is it doesn't have soul to it. And it needs to be imbued with some kind of soul or grace.